Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the Morning Market Review with myself, Russell Shaw. I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXCM. Just want to draw your attention to my email address, which is rshaw at fxcm.com. Today is Friday. It's the 25th of August. And uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and bring up our disclaimers. And I'll start off with the high-risk investment warning. Good morning, Raj. Pleasure to have you on the webinar. Hello, Kim. Thank you very much for signing in. I want to just thank everyone for joining this morning. It is highly appreciated. I'll just keep this high-risk investment warning on for a few moments more. Okay, let's just bring up the commentaries disclaimer. Hello, James. Okay, that is fine. James just uh, wanted to know how we create the three zones. We can certainly cover that. All right, let me just bring up our references. Uh, Marketscope 2.0, okay, and tradingview.com. Uh, let's just go through to Trading View, and then I'll go through to Market Scope, and we'll do the uh, the, the zone setup. Uh, I just want to show you the the real yield. Um, it was up yesterday, so this is really our our bugbear is is yields. Um, it came down markedly by about six and a half percent on Wednesday, and then it was up about close to 4% yesterday. Um, that's kind of like a, a, a seesaw. You know, it's uh, up and down, teeter-totter, right? It, it's it's really playing with our minds as, as traders. Hey, Howard, morning to you. I am very well, thank you very much, and I trust you are well as, as well. Um, this is kind of a really just, um, seesaw action it's really um, hard to trade this type of action there's just no other way to explain or understand it when we get this um, seesaw action it, it's it's gonna uh, be tough to trade and um, if you take a look at the nasdaq 100 yesterday when we looked at it it looked as if there was going to be a reference candle reversal uh, that's faded that's faded out so um, I don't see us getting this higher trough in so we put HT question mark and that's because um, we have to wait until the third condition we have to wait until the third condition which is the close and it's a weekly chart so the close is only going to be at the end of trade on a Friday and um, we're just not going to get the um, well, I don't think we're going to get the uh, the reversal here. Let me just show you what I mean, and then I'm going to go into the zones. I'm looking for what we call a reference candle reversal. It's at least three candles. It doesn't have to be three candles, but the most basic form of it is three candles. And uh, basically, you've got three conditions. The first condition is a candle that's got the lowest low in at least three candles. That was last week's candle. That's got the lowest low. Uh, the second condition is price needs to uh, go higher than the reference candles high. We got that. As of yesterday, price was above the reference candles. But then the third condition and the most important condition, without the third condition, we have nothing. It's got to close above the reference candles high and that we don't have. And that's a big pity. That's a big pity because uh, effectively what we're trying to do is we're trying to look for dips in primary uptrends. And this looked as if it could have been a nice uh, a dip to potentially exploit. Uh, let's carry on 
looking at how this uh, unfolds. But uh, yesterday, set off, I felt just um, quite disappointed by. All right, let's just go through to James's uh, questions. He's um, asked, how do we set up the three zones? And um, what we'll do, James, is we'll take it from the top. Let's get rid of these. All right, so um, what we do is we put in two Bollinger Bands. So you go through to um, add your indicator. Um, just type in here Bollinger's. Okay. Now, the first setting, first setting is we're going to put a 20. This is just a standard Bollinger Band. Uh, standard deviations, keep it at two. Okay. Uh, the band line colors, I like making the 22s red. I typically make them, and I make them a little thicker. And um, hide the average line. I actually don't want the moving average. So I'm going to say yes, hide the average line and just click OK. And here's the first envelope, the first set of bands. Uh, add in your second bands. Uh, add in your second bands now. So just add indicator. Uh, back to Bollinger Bands. Uh, keep your number of periods as 20. Change your standard deviations here to 0.75. Just to let you know, when I first started looking at these zones, I started off with one and I used something called Hike and Ashy Candles. I just felt that the 0.75 was better for the high connection. I've just kept it at that ever since. Um, band lines color. This one, I uh, make a uh, navy blue. Uh, just make it a bit thicker. And hide that average line. We don't want that average line in. Just click OK. And then we've got the three zones. Does that uh, answer your question there, James? Just let me know. Uh, effectively, we've got now zone one, which is between the upper blue, upper red. We've got zone two between the two blues, and we've got the uh, lower zone between the uh, zone three, I beg your pardon, between the lower blue and the lower red. And effectively, um, it's uh, a map for trends. So a strong trend is going to trend in zone one. Strong, a strong trend up. A strong trend down is going to trend in zone three. And then you've got no man's land or the neutral area in the uh, the Bollinger's. Okay. Um, and it's, it serves as a map. Take a look at what happened to the NASDAQ in terms of the zone. Again, um, just to reiterate, um, I felt that uh, yesterday's price action uh, was... Uh, quite disappointing. It fell from zone two into zone three. It's fallen back from neutral into the weak channel. That puts us you know, in, in, in the bearish channel here. Um, more than that, yesterday's candlestick on the NASDAQ is what we call an outside day. Um, it's, its range is far larger then Wednesday's range, and that is telling because Wednesday's range was large. Okay, we had this big uh, movement up on Wednesday. It really looked strong, and that was uh, really cancelled out. And then some yesterday. Rush is uh, writing here to say engulfing, bearish engulfing. See that? Um, so it's done. If we have to combine these two candles on the Nasdaq. So let's just combine Wednesday and Thursday's candle uh, just to get an idea of the sentiment. And uh, what would happen is we take the range. So the range would be all of yesterday's candle because um, Wednesday's candle's all inside of it. Uh, where's the open? It opens over here. Where's the close? Over here. Okay. So if you um, understand analysis, you can just see what a bearish candle this is. 
Um, if you prefer candles, let's turn this into a candle. I'll make it red. You can just see how we've got this big selling tail right on top. So that's uh, the combination of these two candles. Um, what we've got today is um, the second day of Jackson Hole. It's a, a symposium in um, a small town called Jackson Hole in Wyoming. It's effectively a um, an academic gathering, I suppose. But um, over the the um, most recent years, it's actually become a an important part of um, the Fed's communication to the market. And if we just go back to the yield, um, we've got um, we've got. Jerome Powell speaking today. I think he's speaking at uh, 2 p.m. G, uh, GMT or 5 past 2 GMT, which would be 5 past 3 UK, 5 past 4 ZA. Um, and if he talks up interest rates, okay, if he talks up the real rates, in other words, what, what could he say that would push real rates up? Well, if he had to say, uh, th there's two things here that uh, I think we have to be on the lookout for number one. Any sort of comment on the duration of uh, higher rates. So if we, that would sound something like, we are going to keep rates higher for longer. Uh, that could effectively push the interest rate up. If it's going to push the interest rate up, uh, it's going to act as a, um, a headwind on the markets. The other thing that you can keep an eye, uh, an ear out for, I guess, is something called R star, R star, uh, which is the neutral uh, interest rate. It's a it's a theoretical um, interest rate. Nobody knows what R star is. It's um, effectively when you are at your equilibrium rate, your neutral rate, your um, uh, demand uh, equals supply in terms of investments and savings. And um, what happens is um, anything if the um, if the central bank lifts rates above the neutral rate, that's called a tight monetary policy. If they lower rates below the neutral rate, that's called a loose monetary policy. Now, we all know that we've been um, tightening. We've been raising rates. And theoretically, when rates are raised, um, when rates are raised, GDP is meant to slow down. That hasn't happened. And unemployment is meant to have increased. That hasn't happened either. So the question is, well, how restrictive is the current monetary policy? And that might have to do with the neutral rate. In other words, the neutral rate may be higher, the theoretical neutral rate may be higher than where it's currently estimated at. If there's any comment that the neutral rate is higher than where uh, we um, previously suspect, that means real rates are going to be talked up. That's going to talk up the real rates. If that talks up the real rates, again, that's going to act as the headwind. Okay, so those are the, the two sort of uh, topics that I'll be listening out for. Um, something that is interesting is um, gold. I just want to show you how gold is moving, um, which is uh, sort of counterintuitive. Um, I think before we tackle gold, we must, we must reference the US dollar because they uh, – intrinsically linked. Let's go through to the US dollar and just see how that is um, traveling. And then we'll take a look at gold. Okay, so let's go through to the weekly. Take a, take a look at this, Kim. The resistance we've attacked, we've gone back in. We're starting to attack resistance again. All right, so um, I just don't know uh, if this resistance level is going to hold or not. It's very much linked to that real rate, um, that real yield. If that real yield carries on going up, I think dollar carries on going up, I think this uh, resistance level falls. Okay, uh, But we're there at the moment. Uh, it's very much, I think, going to depend on what comes out of Jackson Hole. Um, if you take a look at the uh, zones, we are in 
zone one, we are tending towards an overbought area here. Okay, we are tending towards that overbought area. Uh, let's see how that corresponds with the comments coming out of Jackson Hole. If we go through to gold, I thought the movement of gold was quite interesting. Um, it has shown relative strength. It's moved from zone three into zone two. Okay, it's moved from zone three to zone two. So that's relative strength. That's a movement forward. Um, the problem, of course, now is that the dollar is being supported. That real rate jumped. Uh, yesterday. I think that's putting some pressure on gold. And if you take a look at that RSI, it's dipped below 50. Okay, so uh, if we're going to see some sort of uh, bullish movement in gold, I think there has to be some moderation in the tone of comments coming out of Jackson Hole. And I think then we need to get the RSI above 50 and holding. Uh, conversely, if we get hawkish comments out, uh, then I think gold might fall back. We might fall back. So if anybody is trading the precious metal, uh, just be aware that the comments today are going to be market moving. Uh, very important indeed. All right, let's take a look at uh, the DAX and we'll end off uh, with the DAX. So let's just bring that up. Another chart that I think is quite challenging for us. Um, the higher trough was. Uh, potentially on the cards yesterday, but it wasn't confirmed, so we had to have that question mark in. Okay, what happened yesterday? Big sell off on the stock markets. Okay, so the DAX has fallen all the way back into zone three. Um, so all these potential um, higher, uh, sorry, all these potential dips in the um, uptrends have evaporated and that's a big pity because that's exactly the type of setup that we're looking for in uh, this webinar and unfortunately we've got to carry on being patient uh, at some stage we will get the reference candle reversals but we have to wait for them to effectively manifest all right that's as far as we're going to go this morning if there's any questions please go ahead and Type those in. Any questions, please go ahead, type those in. All right. All right, let's wrap up here. Thanks very much, guys. I appreciate uh, you signing in this morning. I want to wish everyone a terrific weekend ahead, and we shall uh, chat uh, Monday morning. All right. Thanks very much, guys.